morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for joining us on this um, webinar um, as part of the National Science Week. Um, Ms. Matlo has set the platform when she explained to us about soil and soil characteristics, and, and Ms. Um, Hienengsa also continued with setting the platform that I need um, when she explained um, or shared more information on the climate of weather. Now, what I'm going to go into is how we can now utilize the soil and the weather, the rain, example, um, et cetera, to make something that we need on a daily basis, which is food. Statistics have shown that um, around 80%, in some instances, around 80% of the total household income is spent on food. And this food is sourced from markets, some is through um, exchanges and, and others are from public um, food programs. Now, with this information, it has also shown that in a lot of instances, the, the, the notion is that you get food insecurity mostly in the rural areas, but it has been found that in the urban areas, there is what is known as the urban poor, and these um, individuals or households have been found to be food insecure because of the high amount of money that is spent on uh, food. That is what I mentioned earlier, 80%. So now the question that one asks is, why are we not doing something about this? And as some um, philosophers said, if you grow your own food, it's um, simply, simply equivalent to one um, printing their own money. Somebody might ask, how do we do this? So this is what this presentation is about. If you look at the picture that's on your left, it is an example of a homemade vertical farming um, structure. Um, all you need is PVC pipes. If you go to your local um, hardware store, you get PVC pipes, you get the joints, um, you make several holes and you put your seedlings there and you make sure that there's sufficient water to irrigate. And there you have your vegetable in, a, in PVC pipes. If you want to go simpler, um, the picture that is in the middle, you can use empty um, soft drink bottles. You cut them, you can stack them up to make uh, something equivalent to the vertical um, con um, structure on your left. You cut them up, you fill them up with soil, you put holes, you poke holes on the bottles and you insert your seedlings there and you make sure that at the top you have um, some of these bottles filled with water and through gravity the water will seep through the different layers um, and you have your vegetables growing in such a contraption. If you have a bit of land, you can still go to your hardware store, get a few um, poles and net um, similar to the structure that is shown there and you can um, produce on your land um, covered under shade netting, especially trying to keep away um, birds that normally um, damage your spinaches. Taking it to another level, you can also look into, you know, your 12,5 bags of mealy meal. When you've, the family has finished enjoying the mealy meal, you can take that bag, make holes on it and fill it up with soil, take your seedlings and um, plant them on that bag. You can have instances whereby you don't plant just one type of vegetable, you can plant multiple vegetables, but obviously you will need to know the type of vegetables to plant in such a system because you need to make sure that there is no um, excessive competition between the vegetables. Going back to the two liter bottles of um, fizzy drinks, you can also plant in them uh, where you can cut holes in that, fill it up with soil, and you have your vegetables right on your stoop. Taking it to another level, um, there are farmers that have successfully fed their families and also made significant profit from planting in tires. We know in our communities, as soon as your vehicles, um, the tread of your vehicles, tires has gone, they replace the tires, but the tires start stacking up at home. So you can use this as part of your veggie gardens um, in your household. Um, what I'm sharing with the, with the participants today, it's not some pipe dream or something that was just done in the lab or research that was done somewhere else. It's something that I've also started doing um, as somebody that loves money. So I'm printing my own money by having my own vegetables. So the picture on your left is where the vegetable production starts, where I took a bit of soil and you plant some seeds and you constantly monitor the soil moisture to make sure that you do not starve the seeds. And as soon as the seedlings started emerging, 
um, you transplant them to the soil. And I think uh, for the past two months, I have been enjoying delicious potatoes from my own garden. And at the Agricultural Research Council, we practice what we preach. So um, this is just an example of some of the land that's available next to the buildings where we've planted Swiss chards and a couple of other vegetables. So we do practice what we preach. So somebody might ask, um, in the previous pictures, I showed the shade net whereby you can plant your vegetables under the shade net to keep away some unwanted predators on it. Somebody might ask then what happens when um, some of these, pred I don't, I cannot afford a shade net, but I have um, a bit of ground to plant on. What happens if I want to protect my plants and want to keep away from using chemicals? Um, fortunately, there's been extensive research that, the extensive research that has been done and a simple concoction whereby one mixes chilies and garlic, you let them seep, um, overnight in water and you strain and you take the solution and you spray on your, your vegetable production, you are able to keep away um, a significant amount of, of, of pests as well as some uh, control some of the diseases. Um, some research has shown that you can use your normal dishwashing liquid. Some research has shown that you can also use um, vegetable oil to control insects on, on your production patch. Um, in some instances, there are people that have successfully used, and it has been researched as well, there have been uh, instances whereby you can use ash from after burning a fire, you can use that to control insects um, around your production area. Um, looking at the, the garlic and chilies and dishwashing liquid, white men think that, no, this is something that is just fabricated, but... Um, I'm one of those researchers that has done research on this. And if you look at the picture A, this is um, a typical uh, structure of a bacteria which causes disease known as um, Bocalderia. Um, in picture B, um, this is um, these three pictures that you're seeing in front of you, these were done under a light microscope. So in picture B, we treated the bacteria with the chilies and garlic concoction that I mentioned earlier. And you can see, the blotches that you see on these pictures depict the um, disruption of the bacterial cells. And in picture C, we did the chilies garlic concoction and added the dishwashing liquid. And you can see the flattening of the bacteria showing disruption of the bacteria um, cells. So this is just to prove in, in, in a lab setting that these concoctions do really work. So um, the last thing that I'll leave you with is that would you rather see yourself going to the market, going to the retail stores and spending between 60 and 80 percent of your heart and cash in procuring food? Or would you rather have something in your hand, that being a vegetable patch in your garden? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.